Welcome to the show. It's your man, June Archer here. Motivate you, the winner's circle here on thisis50.com. My special guest today, man, when I tell you he works in mysterious ways and the universe will bless you if you just go ahead and do what it is that you do, making your magic happen. Uh, I am so blessed to have met this young man and I'm glad that you guys are here. Please welcome to the show, Barbara to the stars and now businessman, singer, songwriter himself, Kelvin Truett. Kelvin, what's going on, brother? Man, what's up, man? Thank you so much uh, for having me. What's up, everybody? Thank you all for tuning in. It's good to be here today. Man, I'm so excited, man. You have a new record out called Opposite, written by the amazing, amazing, award-winning, Grammy award-winning singer-songwriter, Eric Bellinger. But before we get into that, uh, I want to talk about your journey, man. I've been so inspired by the things that I've seen and read. Man, you, you are... Barber, interior designer, pastor, event planner, performer. Uh, you, is there anything that you don't do, brother? No, oh, man. I, I used to say, man, I, I don't quit. I don't quit. But uh, but yeah, I've been blessed to do a lot of things and uh, working with my hands and with my heart. Um, you know, has made me pretty much like a, a heart driven entrepreneur, and so mm -hmm. that covers a lot of scope. Uh, at times, I feel like I only do one thing, you know, in service to people. Um, but it, it, I do wear a lot of different hats, man. So so I'm, I'm grateful to have been all of those things. And I want to talk about this because I think what, what you do in terms of being a master barber stylist, uh, people take that for granted because what we know, especially in the music business, if you want to know if something's hot, if you want to know if something's trending, the mm -hmm. best place to get an honest opinion is the barber shop. Right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. So for you, man, uh, people are going through things. People are trying to find a way out, glass half full, uh, light at the end of the tunnel, as I like to say. You've you've heard and been in conversations behind that barber chair. You've had stories. You've, you've developed relationships over the years. What is one thing that you've learned along this journey from just standing behind that chair that you could share with someone that will probably change their life and change their perspective to, to think glass half full, to think, man, there is a way out of nowhere that I can dream the impossible, that I can make my dreams come true. Yeah, yeah, man. Thank you for asking such a loaded question um, because I, the universal thing and theme that I feel, man, is hope in the midst of tragedy. Mm. Like uh, I've been standing behind a chair for almost 25 years, listening to the stories of men um, at different points of their life, uh, points of major success, points of... Mm -hmm. Uh, the the most glorious things you can imagine from childbirth to uh, marriage, the prom, you know what I mean? And I've also been through some devastating times uh, with my clients. You know, I've cut guys who, who've had to bury their mother the same day. I've been with people who um, who literally was on an award show and got news that their father passed away, you know, in the, in the all in the barber chair, you know? So, um, so those stories of triumph has helped me um, with the reality, man, that there's always hope. So no matter what tragedy you're going through, how difficult your situation is right now, I know for a fact that you can come out of it. It's going to take time. It's going to take healing. But uh, but it's always it's always a way out. And so uh, that's what I'm hopeful. That's what the barber chair has taught me. Um, and all the stories, all the decades of clients and storylines that I've had access to, I'm grateful to be able to share the heart of that with the world now through my music. Now, here's a tricky thing, though, Calvin. People will look at you and say, well, man, this guy, is, he's multi-hyphenate, uh, multi-talented. He, he's a renaissance man. It's easy for you to say that, Calvin. It's, it, you yeah. can say whatever. Like, you look at you. You look, you look sharp, handsome, well put together. But you yourself have gone through some stuff, right? You, yeah. you just went through a divorce not too, not too long ago. For you, how did you use that same advice or what other advice have you used to get through your situation? Because sometimes I'm not saying that it it didn't hurt. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that you didn't go through something. Um, but we we know when when two people are brought together, it's not always happy all the time. Um, and marriages work. I want I want you to first talk about the work that's needed to put into a bond yeah. like that. But also, if, if, if you don't mind being as transparent as you can, 
Like, what are the things that we could work on moving forward that you learned through that process and what life is after the divorce? Yes, yeah, certainly, certainly. Um, so, so being in a marriage, marriage is actually um, one of the strongest unions that I believe in. I'm, um, as you guys know, I'm a pastor and um, more specifically um, called to the marriage space. So I've officiated over 50 weddings. Um, I, could, I, I branded myself to take couples from seriously dating to happily ever after um, and giving them the coaching to not just have a successful wedding, but to have a successful marriage after the wedding. And what I didn't know was that my own marriage was suffering in, in my own house. Um, and when when uh, my, my marriage suffered from ongoing infidelity and almost uh, living a, a, a alternate reality um, on, on two different sides of the equation, right? The same marriage, the same bed, the same family, the same children. However, those experiences that were the same were being lived and experienced differently by both people. Um, and so it was difficult for me to accept that I was getting divorced. Um, it was difficult for me to accept the reality of my actual marriage, not just the fantasy that I um, um, love to live in. You know what I'm saying? And as a man, it made me feel broken. It made me feel like I wasn't enough. It made me feel like uh, embarrassed and ashamed to the degree. I'm a barber. I've been in a barber shop. So when you're, uh, you know, it's frowned upon if you're if you're a spouse or you can't keep, you know, your house in order as a, mm -hmm. as a pastor. It's it, the Bible say, you know, uh, uh, you know, as a leader, as a pastor, qualified servant. You should have your own house in order. So when I found out about the things that were happening, um, love remained, but there was a lot of confusion. So I've had to figure out, man, how do I grieve um, and love at the same time? Because uh, I, me and my me and my former wife, man, I, I love her. I've loved I love her today. I've loved her um, our whole life. We had a friendship before we had a marriage. And so now we're moving on um, after our relationship. We suffered a big injury, man. Um, like. And when we became one, it's literal oneness. Like it's no right. longer listen. I'm not affected by the marriage um, ending. She's not affected by the marriage ending. We're affected that a part of our bodies are is gone. Mm. Um, so uh, the thing that helped me the most was to look at um, amputees um, because I wondered how my physical body. If something happened in my physical body, what would it take for me to heal? And I know people who have lost their leg. Um, Wayman Tinsdale is not only my favorite Sacramento King, he's also uh, my favorite bass player. He's a bassist and he lost his leg. I believe it was diabetes or something. Diabetes, yes. And um, his resilience after that, because it's not that you have a leg now, it's that life goes on. It just doesn't go on the same way. Right. And you have to make um, concessions for what you used to have. And as I begin to look at that, I'm, I'm fascinated by how amputees um, navigate their life. Even with uh, replacements, um, science is getting better. You're able to maneuver. You just won't maneuver the same. And so in my divorce, I had to figure out how that part of what I feel like my flesh is physically gone now in that capacity. So um, what do I got to do? And um, I, the, uh, my sons live with me. And so I'm, I'm like leading and bleeding at the same time trying to, uh, try, you know, it feels like a death, but imagine somebody dying and you see them every day or every two days, you know, uh, two days on, two days off and every other weekend. It was difficult. It was embarrassing. It was, it was what I felt. It was shameful to have helped so many and not um, be able to help myself in this regard. So we pursued um, reconciliation um, to the point of the exhaustion and um, it opened my heart to a new space of of accepting that that life can continue after divorce life there is new hope um you know there's new beginnings and to to i remember we were just friends and then we became lovers you know and then we became married and now i'm like yo we were married we were partners and now we're becoming co-parents and looking at the the silver lining in it, you know, there's a lot of mistakes along the way. Trust me, you know what I'm saying. Like uh, my heart sometimes still ain't healed. Uh, I look at I look at my ex spouse different. My ex spouse looks at me different, you know, because we've been through a thing. Right. But to find hope 
and to find the beauty in our children that we had together and the memories we had together. We're coming up on the holiday season. We do holidays different now. And it's scary at times, but to find hope and little ways to just say, you know what, you know, uh, that we're going to do an exchange on our kid's birthday. But we're about to spend like like 30 minutes together, you know what I mean? And just like make intentional time to create new memories and be hopeful about that. So um, if you're going through that, if you if you are in a relationship that has suffered an injury, you know what I'm saying? It's time it's time to really either um, deal with the injury, get into the rehab of it, the therapy of it. Um, or if you if it's an amputation, you know what I'm saying? It's time to start learning how to navigate life without that particular limb being a part of your body. You still you can still move around, you still have greatness in you, you, you gotta you still have the ability to dream. And in my case, um, I'm not disqualified from ministry because I'm divorced. I'm uh, expanding ministry and doing it three minutes at a time through these songs of of you know, resilient songs of, of victory, you know what I mean, that I'm learning about my own body work. So I hope that uh, answer, I hit every point, but it's, it, it, there's definitely hope um, after sorrow. You know, unexpected grief is is a community of people that I love so much and I've been through it. I'm the poster child for unexpected grief. You know, um, you know what I mean? It felt like every time I turn around in my life, here comes something else to adjust to. Mm. And, and so, I want to sing to those people. I want to sing. My music is for is for people who imagine that their life would look different uh, 20 years ago. You know what I'm saying? Where we had these hopes and it didn't work out that way, um, but we still got time left. So, uh, so that's pretty much uh, how I feel about uh, divorce and and how to to. I'm trying to hold on to, to love, man, and just live a life of love. And I noticed uh, through being a jerk for several months. <laughs> um, <laughs> You don't work that good with your ex, you know what I'm saying? But to yeah. connect stuff that you that's still loving, it, it, it just it has created a, a interesting uh, pocket for me and to co-parent with uh, with someone who's been my friend for most of my life. I appreciate you sharing that, man. That that that's beautiful, and I hope that people uh, can receive that in the proper fashion that they could use that moving forward. If there was one word that you could share with people that are in relationships. Uh, in a union that could be foundationally sound what word would would you give someone that could give them a piece of that foundation uh to not make the relationship right but just like i said to help set the proper foundation for their relationship yeah i, I would uh, remind them that every relationship is growing you're either growing together or you're growing apart they both take effort so i would uh, tell the struggling relationship to establish more points of connectability so that you can grow together if you imagine two kayaks in the ocean if they if they uh, have the joining braces they're going to go the same direction even if there's some distance between them right because they're two different boats you know but if we both go out and we have the same goal just the waves and the turbulence of life will have us drift apart. If we start at the same place and just let the ocean move, they will be miles apart. So more connectivity, whether it's a date night, whether it's a, a, it's a, a favorite movie. Um, I'm dating again uh, now and uh, me and my lady, man, we, we love to, to just go to restaurants and we people watch. Uh, we'll just be at our table and just like, oh, what you, how long do you think they've been together? It's one of the things that, that, that we enjoy together, but more points of connect connecting with each other, I think can help your boat stay in the same direction, even through troubled times. You know what I'm saying? Uh, life ain't gonna always be easy. Uh, people, you know, we deal with loss and and life suck as an individual from time to time. So right. you can you double that up once you add another person to the equation. So more points of connectivity weekly, though, weekly, though. You know what I mean? It can't be um, or for me, it doesn't work uh, spontaneously. It has to be intentional. Like we go to church on Sundays. Mm -hmm. Hey, man, I'm with my girl on Thursdays. You know what I mean? We hit up we hit up the reverse happy hour. That's our sacred time. Every, I don't care how many kids is running around saying nothing. It, you know, uh, strong, healthy parents, man, make healthy, healthy uh, children who become healthier adults. So, uh, you know, the family is, is the solution to every problem on earth. It started in the family. So uh, that's, a good, that's a good word, Calvin. That's a good word, brother. I, I, I love it. My wife and I. You know, 
frequently have date nights, right? You need that that time. So I, I I encourage you know couples, young couples, even older couples. As you get older, revisit those things that allow you to fall in love and fall in like with each other again, and that's mm-hmm. where you'll find some of that magic. Um, during these times, uh, I think people have been hitting walls in terms of uh, mental health and mental fitness. Um, your your new record opposite pretty much touches on some of the pitfalls that people fall into especially when it comes to substance abuse or just personal abuse on themselves and and the weight of the world that they carry on their shoulders um what are the things that you lean on in those times where you're like man um i need to do the opposite you know is yeah. it a scripture that you that you listen to is it a, is it a song that you put on is it is it talking to your lady in those moments, for those people who are battling with mental health, uh, mental fitness, and, you know, man, I don't know if I can make it tomorrow. Like, I don't know if I can make it out of this moment. Uh, what do you lean on? Yeah, for me, it is it is scripture, man. And it's that uh, there's a way that seems right to a man. But mm. in the era of his destruction. And so what I did is I, I literally calculate. I look at every one of my moves that was calculated. And I had to honestly um, look at the results and say, when I'm in charge, <laughs> um, it ain't worked out very good for me. You know what I'm saying? When I say I'm passionate about this, um, I'm probably like 0 for 20. Uh, but when I uh, when I uh, reestablished myself to my faith, man, my faith was even fractured from what I went through. And I reconnected uh, and I just said, God, I, I legitimately need you to, to help me because I want to do the stuff that's uh, that's rewarding, you know what I mean? And as we as it uh, pertains to substance, I'm being more uh, brave about my story, man. I struggled in my family history with alcoholism. Every man that I that I've known from my bloodline was an alcoholic. And um, it doesn't help that I like to drink. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like I enjoy socially drinking. And um, during COVID, man, that enjoyment. It, it was almost daily and I had to put a word to it. And I said, that is alcoholism. I, you know, when I'm having a drink by myself or I drink this frequently. And so when I name it, what it is, it don't feel as friendly as it did before. And so. Mm, got um, you. Got you. So I, it's really attack is really attacking it and, and, and giving it, give, not really giving it a name, but kind of knowing exactly the- what it is. Yeah, of where it can take me. So, so I I also struggle with with violence, man. You know, uh, what I my pedigree is different than what I want to be. So I work hard to not do um, what comes natural to just my regular brain. You know, um, a very retaliatory spirit since I was a child, right? So I think about the worst outcome of what will happen if I do the things to my best of my ability, which I want to show up great in the world. If I if I go on this violent play, what's going to happen? And I don't want that. So if I don't want that result, I want the opposite result. I got to do the opposite action, which means uh, maybe instead of confronting, it's time to not confront. Maybe instead of uh, trying to retaliate, it's time to extend grace and Mm -hmm. just learning those those principles to help me do the opposite. Um, My brother, I'm really um, praying and and it's been years, man, with, with tobacco addiction uh, to cigarettes. And uh, we talking through, it's like, man, every time you want to smoke a cigarette, you just don't. And he's had many years of success with that. There's been some, there's been some times where, you know what I mean? He slipped up and went backwards and he started smoking again. But the, the inch by inch model, I've seen it work. Man. I, I love that, man, because people are, Kelvin, people are struggling, and I just want to take this time now. There's there's an app uh, for those who are watching who may be struggling and battling. Uh, there's a star app for mental help, and there's resources available for you guys on your iOS or, or your Android devices. Please look at the link, tag it. Um, star is 100% confidential and customizable um, to whatever that you need. All right. And if there's stress, if there's burnout and work or your relationship, please, is an opportunity for you to get help. And if this doesn't work for you, everyone who has a device is really this simple. 911. 
911. Never find yourself in that situation where you feel helpless or hopeless. Um, I've been blessed to connect with Kelvin, and tomorrow uh, we're going to be showing and talking about your new song. Uh, you'll be performing uh, this live piece. Um, uh, it's amazing what this is. Um, so if you guys are watching this tonight, 7 p.m., I'll be hosting an event where you guys can watch this and really enjoy uh, the program. But more importantly, in, enjoy what Kelvin and his message is uh, for this event, the Intercommunity Gala. Uh, you could look it up. Um, but Kelvin, let's talk about this song, man. Let's, let's talk about it. And um, before we talk about it, brother, um, if you don't mind, we're just going to show a little piece. Let's do it. I tell myself that it's COVID. And everybody drinks more. I try to tell myself that it was finally okay to try what I've never tried so I could be something I've never been. Jesus. And when, in, when I was in my darkest hours, I asked God to change me. And I did the opposite of everything that I was thinking about. Yeah. Every idle thought that tried to take over my mind Every plan specifically, y'all don't understand what I'm talking about. I know exactly where, how, when. And I asked God to change me. And uh, this next song is called Opposite. Yeah. It's uh, It was also written by Mr. Eric Bellinger right here, man. So thank you for your support. Thank you for your friendship. Thank you for everything that you've been in this area. Thank you. Let's get it. Can't give it all away. You guys got to watch the full performance tonight uh, at the Intercommunity Gala. Man, Kelvin, uh, when you started off in this performance, teared up. What was going through your mind at that time? Man, I actually thought about I actually thought about um, the struggle. Yeah, I, I felt it. Um, I said that was a day that I set aside for for media for all the participants um, who uh, contributed to my album, my sound. Um, they were there in the room supporting me and I know what birthed the music while I was with the musicians, while I was with the songwriters, what birthed the music was my, um, uh, was my life of, of, at that time, it was a struggle of constantly contemplating the wrong thing and its outcome. You know what I mean? And the, the rage, the self-hatred, the disappointment in myself. Uh, and my circumstances is what I shared that gave birth to this music. So I'm looking at the faces of the sound that, that crafted it. And it was uh, a strong emotion that came over me of gratitude that um, that my story did not end um, by not doing the opposite. You know what I mean? Like now I'm sitting here and I'm sharing these stories. And and I, um, there were some songs before that where I know that that we really were able to to move people um, and, and help 
uh, people. So for me, it was it was uh, it was a very emotional time. I teared up just thinking about how how tore up I was when I when I wrote this music, when I crafted this sound, and now the the joy I feel that I get to share it with people who I know can come out of their situation as well. And this is one of your in-home concert series that you do. And you also do a My First Fridays in your barbershop when you when you would, you know, when we're back in, in normal life. Um, yeah. I love the energy. I love when you see those faces and you see the smile, you see Eric's smile. Uh, there's a connection there, right? That these people, like you said, they've been through your journey, know how far you've come. And they also know where you're going, brother. Um, Thank you. If, if you could give someone the best piece of advice right now um, based on where you've been and where you're going, what would that be? Uh, it's a phrase that I, that I, uh, that I like to say is uh, the only way to get out is to walk out. You know, mm -hmm. people struggle with so many different things, man. And, and as I share my story with the world, I believe that my music, it brings healing to little black boys who don't feel like they're enough. And mm -hmm. I want, them to know as I'm raising my own sons, I want them to know that whatever that has you bound in life, you can walk out of that situation, be it alcoholism, struggling with suicide, struggling with, with, with substance uh, in an unfulfilling um, uh, environment at work, it, whatever it is that you're going, that you're ready to get away from, you can't even get to your future until you walk out of your past. You know, however you leave this moment is how you arrive in your next moment. And so uh, I'm arriving in the world now after walking out of, of a season of sadness, a season of, of despair and unexpected grief. You know what I mean? But I'm showing up in the world powerful. So the only way to get out of that is to is to walk out one foot in front of the other, step by step, brick by brick every day. You got this. You got this. Uh, my, my six year old wants to become a better shooter. And he missed a lot of shots. Oh man, he, this guy. <laughs> if there was a, if you got points for missing, man, he's your guy, right? But um, I'm telling him, man, you don't have to stay a poor shooter. You can walk out of that situation too. And so we get up and we go in the backyard and we miss a lot of shots together. But um, the ones that he makes are everyone counts as a make. You know what I mean? And so I'm hoping that his appetite for the makes helps him, uh, you know, become. Uh, a little bit of improvement will, will, will be will be uh, very helpful at this age of his life. And I hope he remember that through the rest of his life. You can do anything you want to do. It, it, you just got to be willing to walk towards it. And you can't go somewhere in, in two directions. You got to pick. You got to pick one. I think the word of God say, man, choose you this day who you're going to serve. And I show I serve the, the, the higher purpose for my life, the higher calling. Sadness will be a part of it, but it's not going to be the sum total. of it. Mm, I love it. Music is a soundtrack to our lives. Uh, for you, Kelvin, what song best represents your journey up to this point or which artist embodies your journey up to this point? Um, the, the song, man, that I've been playing kind of on repeat, man, is uh, it's going to be a lovely day by Kirk Franklin. And um, and I, I love Kirk Franklin in general as an artist for his bravery in the genre. When he came into the gospel uh, genre, it, it, it ruffled some feathers. Um, because it wasn't specifically what was accepted before as gospel. And I know um, that my music, as I'm pushing the country genre and the alternative space, what I call country soul, is um, it, it's almost unidentifiable, um, similarly to Kirk Franklin. But his song, Lovely Day, which was like a, a cover from uh, Bill Withers, um, it, it just encouraged me, man. Uh, since I was a kid, I remember hearing it in real time, like in the nineties. And I'm like, Oh, this is dope where you just command your day to go the way that you want to. That's a song, a declaration, you know? And I just say, man, it's going to be a lovely day for me. Um, and the verses are filled with pain and grief of that song. Kirk, he was writing about that real. So, uh, I want to work with Kirk Franklin. Um, you're one of my collaborations. So when you see this, man, I hope that we can um, create some great music together. But uh, my son loves the song. It's, it's, it's played every day in my house. Man, so. Well, we're going to put it out into the universe because we know what happened when you put something out there to come back. Uh, so, Kirk, Kirk Franklin, if you're watching, if you're listening, we want to see this collaboration happen with you and Kelvin Truitt. And hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll just see you all together with, of course, Eric you know, co-writing a record with y'all, and then yeah. we're gonna have another hit record 
out on only streaming platforms making it happen the record is coming out please when you see it support it this is kelvin truitt opposite uh wherever you see it please support it and for those who are looking for those resources um accentushealth.com that's a c c e n t u s h e l t h.com so if you're looking for an app that can help you please do that and if you want to see the rest of the performance of kelvin truitt please sure. log on tonight 7 p.m intercommunitygala.org that is tonight it's right there you can hop on and we're raising money in the name of substance abuse recovery and for those who need it most um some last words kelvin some last words that you could share uh with anybody watching listening um i know you've given us advice you've given us some good word but just uh lead us with a scripture that we can use daily i know that when i have the opportunity uh psalms 28 is something that i lean on uh for you is there a, a piece of scripture or a verse that someone could use daily just to get their day started or just be grateful when they come home because here's the thing kelvin some people didn't wake up this morning uh those who woke up this morning may not make it through the day and those who woke up and made it through the day may not make it home uh so when we do have the opportunity to get home and finish our day and hopefully get to do it all over again tomorrow what's this piece of scripture or verse that we could use to just just express our gratitude Word, word. I'm going to go to, uh, to Jeremiah um, 29 and 11, man. For I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you, to give you a future and an expected end. And I, uh, those words encourage me daily because I know that God got a plan. And his plan is very clear, is to bring prosperity to our lives here on earth. You know what I mean? So anything that we think uh, that God might be punishing us for, our karma might be catching up with us and all that stuff, man. It's, it's a reframing of those, of those thoughts to say that God got use of all of those tools and all of that mud, all of that dirt to mold us into something beautiful. You know what I'm saying? Like God got a, they got a plan, like a legit plan earlier in that text, man, he told Jeremiah to go to the potter's house and he was, you know, working on clay and the clay, you know, it don't always turn out the way you want it to. So God, uh, show Jeremiah, man, he smashed that same clay and reworked it into something new. So I'm the, I'm the clay and got in the potter's hands. And I know that God is remoting my life. God is using my experience. He's using my afflictions. He's using my pain to mold me into something new. And um, and that newness is what I want everybody to walk into. Man, plans to prosper you, says the Lord, not to harm you. Ain't nothing. Man, it can't harm you. I don't like when people say it make you stronger because that junk do harm you. You be harmed. You, know? <laughs> um, you got to get stronger because of the harm. Um, but but for real, be encouraged, man. He got knows the place. Kelvin, I appreciate it. If you guys are listening and watching, be encouraged. Kelvin gave us a lot of gems with where there's tragedy. There's hope. There's hope in that tragedy. Uh, and if you want to get out of a situ situation, walk out of that situation. But understand keep the people around you that are going to hold you accountable and be a part of your story that they 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 love you when you're down but they're very encouraging when you're up kelvin thank you so much for sharing your story brother i can't wait to work with you again and work with you in person we're going to do something together we're going to do something big we're going to figure this thing out but i appreciate you where can they follow you where can they like what you're doing where can they see the video and the music excellent matt you can follow me um at uh, underscore that dude Kelvin is my Instagram. I'm actually um, reintroducing my social footprint this weekend. So if you're not following me and you're ready for this big announcement, please go over to my Instagram page at underscore that dude Kelvin. And for all other streams, you can find me at Kelvin Truitt music.com. Kelvin Truitt music.com, that is. And I look forward to um, engaging with you there. Uh, join my email list and um, the, the rest of this year be really starting a conversation to build uh, my village and to build our tribe um, of resilience because we know that life can go on. Man, I love it. Let's help Kelvin build that tribe. And we know it takes a village and we want to be a part of that village. That's Kelvin Truitt. I'm your host, June Archer. The Winner Circle motivates you here on this 50.com. Thank you all so much. Tell somebody that you love them today because tomorrow is not promised. Never leave that opportunity left mm, unsaid because, once again, it's not promised. Thank you all for tuning in. God bless you all.
Peace. Peace. Thank you, guys.